and with these words we will have to jump on to to the next picture and, and Neville has sent me three pictures and I believe that these are three pictures from different angles and, and, and levels of zoom uh, of the same anomaly uh, from so 1441 Neville tell us about okay. these it's a, it's a, the one with the opening into the side of the butte mm. Yeah. You have yeah. you have yeah. sent me a picture of a of a hillside, a, a rocky hillside with a with a white yeah. ring around. Yeah, the first one has the 441 in the upper right corner. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, these are uh, what what I think this is. I think it's an open in a um, uh, square section in in the butte, you know. It, but it's it's like it's from the soul the the image was taken from. It looks as if it's on the end of the butte, but when you move around, it's it's really on the side. But it looks as if it's been a square, like a like a square opening with two walls up the side. Now up, the, up mm -hmm. these walls on the side, there's yeah. carved there's carved heads and things mm -hmm. things like uh, that. You know, I mean, today this morning. I think it was, it was five in the morning. Some some new images came through, and uh, you've got a better view of this area. Actually, you, it, it's come more more round to the right, and you can see more inside. But they've but they've done the the the, the hiding work again on this bit, you know, because I tried to have a look to see whether there was any um anything left of what I found on um, those sides, you know, on the wall, but there's nothing left there now. Uh, wait, you can see where the walls have been, you know, because I mean? all around, when you, when you look around these boots, you can see the um, the remains of built straight walls, you know, as if things were like, um, like a, like a, a square building there that the front's been either washed off or the, the front screen um, has collapsed, collapsed down or, st or stuff like uh, that, you know. But on that image, it looks as if there's a carved head with um, with eyes that of both of the columns on the side, you know. Yeah. Um, now on the other picture, there's another picture there. This is from um, earlier saw, but it's it's. The same as that, you've got like a wall, a, a wall section coming up, but on this wall section, there's a, there's a, you can basically see it. There's a, there's a person's head, and they're looking upwards, and they've got a helmet on. And I thought, my God, what, they've left that there for people to see. I'm thinking, why, why, why leave it? It could be somebody who um thinks all right I'll, mm -hmm. I'll leave it i mean i don't know I, I don't know whether these images are checked before they're sent out or they're um, done done in a rush and uh, they've just been told to hide the biggest bits and try and hide the smaller bits you know i mean i would say it's a really hard job to try and cover up whatever is left you know mm -hmm. but um no, no, but all, these these boots, are, you can see it. Even you don't have to do any um, enhancing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. and, like I, I I I used to enhance them up all the time. Now I don't I don't need to. I just show what I'm saying, and that's it. You know, I just um, change it to normal color rather than the horrible. Pretty orange color, you know, and um, but um, all I do is just change the color and deepen the tones and things like that. I don't really um and enhance anymore. I don't have to because there's that much stuff there that you can just see without doing anything, you know. Um, I think it's best uh, if you show something that you can see, and that's it. You, you don't have to me, me, you don't have to mess about and and enhance things up because that way sometimes if you work on one bit, you can sometimes spoil an, another bit. You know, I think just show it the, the way it is, and then let Neville, people... Neville you are doing great, great, and you're. Gigapan pictures are amazing and those Gigapan pictures are giving all of us an 
or everybody else in this world the opportunity to go do their own research, to go do their own study of, of these images. This is a wonderful work you have done. Uh, but that's why that's why I started to do it rather than going every because when I started I st you, ha you have to you have to go to NASA you have to go through every single image you have to work out what image you join there join there join there you used to think right which way is the rover moving which you didn't know but with the pans you actually follow which way the rover was moving and stuff like that you know. Which is good, which is good for people starting now. If anybody knew that, it would be Neville. Neville, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stop you here because we would like to go for a round here, starting with David, uh, David uh, uh, telling his thoughts uh, on this image here. What's your thoughts on this, David? Interesting. Uh, as part of NASA's uh, trickle-down disclosure, if you will, uh, we've all noticed in the last couple of months that they've stopped hiding the blue sky. Yeah. The blue sky is back in front of your face. <laughs> and uh, with Neville figuring out how to do the PDF gigapans, we now have uh, much higher resolution images to work with. And it's obvious, as he says, we're not trying to hide things like they were. Uh, we have things right in front of our faces. Now, to someone maybe new at it, they'd look at it and say, oh, it's a bunch of rocks, or you guys are crazy. But uh, you know, once you've been looking at thousands of images for any number of years, all of our eyes are trained to seeing the uh, decrepit, weathered uh, sculptures and remnants of uh, foundations and walls and all of these other things. And uh, this this is a very compelling picture. And uh, Neville has uh, perhaps the most highly trained eye of all of us, being the graphic artist he is, and along with Martine. Uh, so he is able to immediately pick out these walls and uh, the adjoining buttress surfaces. And, uh, and once he points it out, uh, that obvious, you know, it's completely obvious. I see him now myself. But uh, again, one, a wonderful picture and just an incredible life work that you provided us with, Neville, with the Gigapans. These are something that will be referred to and researched, I think, for decades, if not centuries to come. Hmm. Martina Graney? Yeah, I mean, this is fantastic. I love this image. Um, I'm, I'm seeing like double entrances, maybe even a triple entrance into the butte itself. Um, but without a doubt, they have tried to hide the fact that these are entrances by actually using a lighter tone on the walls, if you see what I mean. Um, it, the, these light tones don't match any, any other shadowing anywhere else on, that, on the side of that butte. Um, I can see the, the, these creatures and the, the helmeted man, the head on the first one, uh, a standing figure on the second partition. Um, but I, I, I also take on board what Nev said about, um, you know, when things are over enhanced. But I think we're still entitled to try and bring to the surface what they have concealed. and. I mean, both Chris and I are fans of using burn tools because it is the gentlest way of bringing up some deeper detail which has been fogged over, blurred over. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, those figures on that um, tableau I've just shown you, there's no... They are visible, they are visible, but when you know people do have difficulty in tuning in and seeing what some of us see, Sometimes you need to give that little bit of assistance for them. And Nev, I know you say about, you know, you don't enhance, but you are doing it in effect. Because you're outlining things to help people see them. So yeah, yeah. it's a similar situation, you know. But, I mean, I, you know, I, I hate the idea of anything being over enhanced, especially no added colour. I never add any colour to anything. And surprisingly, and I expect Chris is notice this when you use a burn tool these colors seem to pop up from nowhere from beneath yep. so they are there you know but anyway this is a fantastic find and and i'm i'm so aware that we have got entrances going into these buttes and where you've got these what look like um uh, you describe them as almost like sheathing layering on some of the side of these buttes I think they're almost like a cover to entrances, almost like a dormer, 
that comes down over a, an entrance or a window on a roof, they slightly, they slightly sort of lip up on the ends, um, which would throw away any rock falls or, you know, and would keep any entrances clear of debris. But um, I, I find this most incredible, wonderful. It is, it is indeed. Billy Carson, what's your thoughts on Neville's picture here and his yes, work? Sir. This is a great picture. The first thing that pops out is the blue sky. You know, yeah. uh, I remember when I was, uh, you know, first posting some NASA images back in like 2008, 2009, and the sky was red. And I was trying to tell people, no, the sky is not really red. And I would get mm -hmm. so many arguments with people, and they would argue with me that the sky is red. And I'm telling them, no, it's not. And now, <laughs> finally, we're getting to the point where it's been disclosed because the pictures show the blue sky in some case, not all, but some cases they will show the blue sky now, which is fantastic. And people can see that it looks just like the light is scattering, just like here on Earth uh, yeah. in the atmosphere. So fantastic. Yeah. You can clearly Billy Carson, you see, at least I can clearly see you, it. Billy it Carson? You Hello. just got an alien voice here. Uh, your voice uh, disappeared. Your sound disappeared. Could you go uh, 25 seconds back? Okay. Okay. Boom. Here I am. I, am I back? Yes. Okay. Where did I, where'd you hear me at last? Blue sky, radiant scattering. Okay. Yes. So okay. So the, the sky, the blue sky, with the uh, the light scattering, it's just like here on Earth. And then, as far as I can tell, with this. Um, this image, it appears that the, it used to be, be a, a structure here that was completely washed over by water. And yeah. you can still see, in my opinion, what appears to be some moist dirt or moist mud on the structure itself still there. Even between the two walls where Nev outlined um, the anomalies, in between those two walls, it almost appears to be like A bad handwrite. <laughs> really, we, yes, it seems oh. that we have a bad connection today. But it, there might even be a portal in between two, leading into the actual butte itself. Um, uh oh. <laughs> right. I'm gone again. Oh my goodness. I'm gone again. <laughs> Just go on, Billy. Well. Yeah. Testing one, two, testing one, two. You are going through fine now. Wow. <laughs> the gray aliens are stopping me. <laughs> Feel free to continue. Okay, so what I was trying to say was that with the with the two between the two walls, it appears that um, the this the ground is so moist it might even be puddles of water or mud leading into the butte itself. Yeah. And that the um, what appears to be where water has washed over the top of this structure, now you just have the remnants of what could have been the top of a port crochet or a covering now laying all over the place. So that's basically this is a phenomenal image, and, and I'm going to use this in one of my posts uh, about you know to, to talk about the blue sky on Mars. I'm going to use this this image a lot, Nev. Hmm. Yes. Chris Moroni, I hope we have a good connection to you. <laughs> well, it's showing good, it better be. <laughs> Tell us your thoughts about it. I've got a different theory. I mean, I've looked at, I, I love what this looks like, uh, Nev. It just, it just pops right out, there's no doubt about it. Let's use an analogy for a moment. Let's say we could take the half of the Titanic out of the ocean and shove it on a piece of land. Now, picture it being encrusted. Now, yeah. one of the technicians that work on the Curiosity team have said, come out and said, there is, what I've been saying for the longest time, there is a water cycle on the planet, close and in Gale Crater to boot. So knowing that they're talking about wind, they're talking about, which of course blows around dirt. Now picture this being around for X amount of years and this thing, and what we're seeing in bits and pieces of this thing sticking out. Now, this is the reason why you might see what looks like walls to a room, uh, you can see right above that circle, right up on there, they've got that piece sticking right out of it. Yeah. You can see that just sticking around. In fact, I think several people have done the video about that thing lately. Um, but it's just like, uh, you know, Peter, a uh, good friend of mine, is also known as Space Cadet. He's actually done, he's been into these photos big time. He's a lithographic expert. He's been into photography. And he says there's no doubt 
that what we're seeing, and Nev, you'll even uh, agree to this, he said those those buttes are not buttes at all. No, they're not. They're not. And even you, you've seen the plating, yeah. what looks like plating on the side. These, these buttes, as they call them, are nothing more than manipulated objects on the ground. He's seen one that has said, according to NASA, they claimed that it was 50 feet tall. And now you've got the Curiosity rover close to, you know, you can see the, the rover itself close to the photo. But if you were to picture that thing, the actual rover at the butte, the butte was no more than 15 feet high. And yet you can see panels on the side of it. It looks like they try to take it out and make it look like a rock, uh, this butte thing or whatever. And yet you look at the buttes here on Earth. Now, I know people will say, well, you can't do a comparison because that's Earth. This is Mars. But didn't they say Mars was a lot like Earth? Yeah. Other than no tectonic plates, it was just like Earth. And they still have a water cycle to this day. So I think what we're seeing is not buttes, but actually objects sitting right there, right in front of this rover. They've looked them over, then manipulated and pretty much molested these photos to make them look like they're all natural terrain. And they clearly are not. What we're seeing right there, that looks like some kind of compartment or room or what, whatever you want to call it. It has walls to it. It has a flat floor. It looks like it's flat. And yet, like I said, you go up that, go up that, out of that circle on the edge of that butte, as they call it, and you can see objects just sticking straight out of this thing. I think it's encrusted, intelligently made objects, and that's what they've been looking at these things for the longest time. Yeah. Chris, can I can I just say that I I do wonder sometimes because of all this mineral encrustation that we get, I'm wondering how much of this is metal. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We might, have, we might be just seeing parts that eroded, completely yeah. eroded. Yeah. And you made a great point about the, um, the enhancements because, and there's nothing more obvious if you look at the um, you know, Apollo mission photos. You know, just look at the, the aerial or the satellite views yes. of the moon. All you've got to do is put this in Photoshop and hit equalize. Yeah. And you literally cut through all of the, the haze and the, the whiteout and the washout that they put over these photos and bring out some phenomenal things. Yeah. And, Thanks to Thomas, I'm the only one who's doing a moon photo tonight. <sighs> I didn't realize everybody was doing Martian. But anyway, that's a good, I'm glad I, I did because I'll explain why. But um, this one here, what we're seeing is actually, I think it's the side or the end of something that's been eroded. And we're seeing lots of these things sticking out. That's the only part that they've messed up on and didn't take out. You know, something that's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Chris. Uh, uh, speaking about the moon photos, I did an interview uh, lately here with Kent Johnston, and he sent right. me some some uh, pictures from his uh, secret or uh, his uh, private uh, archive that he has been taking with him home since uh, he had had this archive in his home since. The late exactly, 60s. and that's he gets a hundred percent credit for that because that's that's one yes, of the photos I'm using. I remember some of them uh, because he he put the original numbers on top of his photos, so yep. I could go into NASA's homepage and find the one they had in the digital database and there are some photos that are looking very much alike but there are indeed some photos that has a very different contrast and, and colors oh absolutely and, yeah and, and then, like i said one I'm under the impression where you can see something on the ground that was not on the one on nasa's database the reason why you're seeing a lot of these let's say like when you look at mount shop it's supposed to be in the background I think what they're using is they've got a they've got a program. We can call it a supercomputer. Call it what you will. They've got it's got an algorithm where it just it gets the photo through there. And what it does is it take out it it literally masks every dark pixel, if you will. So this way you don't see shadowing, you don't see edges, you don't see any of that. So this way it it looks completely 2D and not 3D. And even Peter's going, yeah, I've never really even thought of that. This is the reason why everything looks like the detail has been completely taken out of a photo because. Like I said, now when you use your burn tool, it's almost like you're burning off whatever they put on each individual yeah, uh, pixel, and you're bringing out the details. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's exactly what's going on. And mean, well, within reason. I mean, we can only speculate, and you know. Uh, but I believe that's exactly what's going on. And and like I said, he's been into photography and lithographics for years, and he says, "Yeah, I concur." I mean, it's just no doubt. Exactly. Uh, I I want to jump on to, to to the next picture, and that's a picture that Billy has sent me. Billy has sent me. Uh, no, sorry, that's actually Neville's picture. No, sorry, we just did Neville's picture. Billy sent me a picture of uh, of Martinez. Could you please? 